So hi, I'm Hillary Mason, and uh, I'm a computer science professor. And uh, I'm going to talk about how to replace yourself with a very small shell script. Um, or really, not the essential parts of yourself, just the boring parts, and actually a series of very small shell scripts. <laughs> so how would you feel if when you were a kid, somebody came up to you and said, when you grow up, you're going to spend over two hours a day just shuffling data around, just dealing with your own personal communications? I bet you would show a face like this which we've just learned means you're disgusted. Um, so it means that we're all getting nothing done because we're spending all of our time looking at cute pictures of kitty cats on the internet and writing email to each other, usually about cute pictures of kitty cats on the internet. So there really has to be a better way. And hopefully you were this kid and you said, okay, no, there's something I can do about this. I can write some code to fix this. Definitely, because this is not a tolerable situation that we spend our time just repeating the same thing over and over again. So I've actually been working on this for a while, and uh, this was my first attempt um, back when I was in graduate school. So I would ask people who sent me an email to highlight some keywords that they thought were important, and it would get forwarded to my phone via SMS. And that was before we all had email on our phones. There were no Blackberries. Uh, yeah, I'm old. Um, but this is the kind of email I started getting from my friends. <laughs> I have clever friends. Um, and this is also not acceptable. Um, it's really not a very useful solution. So I figured out that uh, from this, OK, the script had to be invisible. So when you email me, you can't know if you're emailing me or if you're emailing a program. Because if you guys know you're emailing a program, you're going to mess with it. Um, so nowadays, um, when you email me, you just don't know. But writing code for handling email is actually very hard because you're not writing code for yourself. You're writing code for other people, and that's you guys. Um, and you guys are difficult uh, because you don't respond to my emails on time. You don't like follow the same priorities as me. Um, so I, the first script I wrote was this little nag bot. So if I flag a message as unresponded to, and it hasn't been responded to within a week, you'll get a message like this. Um, and it, it's all auto-generated, and then the following week you'll get another one, and the following week you'll get another one. And after three messages, pretty much everyone responds. It actually worked on 49 out of the 50 people I've tried it on. And Charlie, you're in the audience. You owe me an email. Um, and after that, they're not going to respond because they won't like me anymore anyway. So here's another thing. People always ask you the same question over and over again. And that's fine. That, that's what you're there for. But why should you have to write the same answer over and over again? Uh, you really shouldn't. Though you, you, of course, need to customize it a little bit. So I have one other script that just tracks all my outgoing email, sees if it's similar to something else I've responded to, and gives me a couple of options. So it says, you know, maybe you want to take something from one of these three messages you wrote before and send that out. And it saves me a lot of time. So some email is really important, but most of your email is not important. And I know you're all on your, your iPhones right now, like checking your email. And you're doing that because you think maybe something important just showed up, but it probably didn't. Um, it's only about 2% that you actually care about. So I have a, a document classifier that tells me when I have important email. And it's trained off email I thought was important in the past. So it's statistically learning uh, what's important and what's not. And then it tells my phone if I have important email. So I don't have to rush to my computer when I get home anymore. All right, so at events like this, you meet all of these awesome people. And then you probably send them a nice little message that says, hey, it was great to meet you. We should do something in the future. And then you forget all about them. At least I do. Um, until you run into them again. So wouldn't it be nice if your email could tell you who you, you had an initial contact with and then forgot to follow up with? It should definitely do that. The names here have been changed to protect the innocent. Um, all right, and, and now we're getting into like Twitter and all of that other stuff that we all need to follow, except it's impossible to read everything that everybody writes. So we all kind of uh, act like we've read it. Like, yeah, I, I totally saw that thing you posted. Um, well, it, it actually is possible to know what's going on. Um, you can just look at your, your list of New York Tech people, your list of students, your list of colleagues, figure out what topics those groups are talking about among themselves, and just follow that. It's much simpler. It's much shorter. Um, it's pretty easy, and you get some cool graphs. So all of these scripts are like tiny. They're short and sweet. They're easy as pie. And if you're interested in playing with them, contributing to them, or talking to me about them, uh, please send me an email. I will respond, really. <laughs> Um, 
And I'm Hillary Mason at hmason at Gmail or hmason on Twitter. And I'm teaching a class on document classification on December 6th if anyone wants to come.